speak up loudly if you're speaking from her uh, right side. Yeah. Um, and uh, we'll start one question, one follow. Uh, Adam. Um, Mayor, first I have a question about uh, one of the resolutions here. It's a, it's a call for the province to develop a homelessness uh, uh, strategy. Is this a simple housing strategy or do we need a more immediate solution for it? I think one of the most important things that the province could do right now is work with municipalities on the housing strategies that we've put into place. Calgary has a very robust housing strategy. It looks at market and non-market housing, and we are also trying to help people who are unhoused. But we really need provincial support, and we need provincial funding, and we need it quickly. There is cold weather approaching, and there are not enough spaces for people to live with dignity. So I would encourage the provincial government to dig deep and look right now for funding that they can provide to all municipalities who need to serve the unhoused population. I'm off topic. Um, obviously, discussions are continuing with the province on con maintaining some contracts for the Green Line. Um, I understand there's meetings again this week. Where are we at in that process and uh, any movement on maintaining some of those contracts? So our administration teams have been in contact with each other since last Friday. They have been working very hard to bring something forward to uh, elected officials in terms of what could be salvaged out of what used to be the Green Line project. So I know that that work has been ongoing with the two administrations and tomorrow morning at 8.30 uh, we will meet again with Premier and Minister Dreeshen and their administrative teams and figure out what we can do to move forward and act in the best interest of taxpayers. There is only one taxpayer and we are trying to make sure that we can preserve pieces of work that are beneficial, but we're going to need the province to agree to that. Yeah, just on, uh, on I guess, the, the relationship between the province and municipalities, we heard from Tyler Gannon, he called it challenging and fractious. How would you describe the relationship between the province and municipalities? I would say that uh, municipalities are more aligned with each other than we ever have been before. And I would say, you know, from a federal and a provincial level, we have been trying to demonstrate to those two orders of government for quite some time that municipalities are underfunded across the board. And it might have taken something like a water main exploding for people to pay attention to the fact that municipalities are suffering from being underfunded. Calgary has done the research. We are underfunded by $311 million every single year in terms of infrastructure dollars compared to what we used to have. So uh, I, I don't know how much more clear I can be. Provincial and federal governments must step up to help municipalities, especially with infrastructure funding. On both counting machines and the resolution passed today to have the province reconsider banning those, just what is your message to voters for what they should expect when it comes to and counting all of these ballots. What, what will they, uh, I guess, experience when the municipal election comes up? So ultimately, the decision on whether or not we have vote, tabula vote tabulators uh, in our elections rests with the provincial government. Um, we have heard Minister McIver say that uh, he's not going to allow them, but maybe he'll have a change of heart based on the vote at Alberta municipalities. The thing about tabulators is you get the results in a very timely manner and people aren't left hanging. There's also less room for error. So with the certainty and predictability that you can get with tabulators, it seems odd to me that you would want to take them away. It also increases the cost to have to do hand counting. And that cost is borne by municipalities and we are already struggling. Uh, Sean, Sean, City. Hi, Sean Madden with City News. So we're working on a polling series right now. One of the topics is immigration. So we recently polled people in Calgary and Edmonton and found about 70% of people in the big cities do not want higher levels of immigration or any more immigration at all. What do you think about that? I think we are at a time when we can see that we don't have enough housing for people. And we can see that we don't have enough infrastructure funding for people to have the schools and the hospitals they need. And when you are faced with that kind of a situation in a major metropolitan center, people are asking the question, if we are going to accept more people, will the funding for all of the things they need come with them? So I believe that people are frustrated at the pace of investment that hasn't kept pace with immigration. I would say it's a reflection of not having enough funding more so than who it is that we're welcoming into our cities. The Premier recently went on TV and basically said there's too much immigration coming. Well, she did say that. 
Um, some people of color have said that stigmatizes them, that maybe puts them at risk. What do you make of, of her messaging on this topic? I think when you're in an elected position, you have to be careful with the words you choose. And to say that there's too much immigration also neglects to add that a lot of people who move to this country are valued for their skills and for the services that they provide us. And this country was built on immigration. So I think we need to be very cautious about the message we're sending. If her message was intended to say that there needs to be funding in place when you invite people to come to this country, I agree with that. And as a matter of fact, when you launch a Alberta is calling campaign, like our provincial government did, and then you don't invest in the cities that are receiving all the people you called, you're kind of in the same position that you're calling out the federal government for. Michelle Yeah, hi. Um, I wanted to ask you about the vote tabulator issue. Has the city of Calgary uh, determined what extra costs you have to bear if you're not allowed to use uh, vote tabulators? So there's some preliminary costs that have been run uh, through our city clerk's office, and uh, it appears that it's going to be approximately $1.3 million at least uh, to implement all of the requirements for the next election. Now, you've used vote tabulators for one election, is that correct? Or? So we used the vote tabulators for the last election in 2021, and we also had uh, a vote of the electors on an Olympic bid. And so that was several years ago. That was the first time we used those tabulators. And did, you, did the city encounter any problems at all with you know, people being suspicious about the results or anything like that? Any kind of concerns about the trustworthiness of the machines? Uh, it's interesting on social media. Uh, you get all kinds of opinions on tabulators and how uh, certain elected officials were installed because these tabulators were rigged to provide an outcome. So there's a lot of mythology out there around tabulators, uh, but the actual science tells you that they are more reliable, more certain, and more predictable than doing hand counts. Mayor, Mayor can I ask um, about the premier's comments about the safe consumption sites during mm -hmm. that fireside chat? I'm curious uh, your thoughts on that, considering there's an issue in, in our city in Calgary. So in Calgary, uh, we had a centralized safe consumption site. And it hasn't worked as intended. Uh, so we have had several conversations with the provincial government. Uh, most recently, probably in 2022, I remember speaking with Marshall Smith from the Premier's office, and we were very clear. What we have heard from our service providers and what we can see through the data is that drug poisonings are happening all over our city. And so if that's the case, a centralized location isn't working, and we have been told that a more distributed model would be better. I find it very interesting that Minister Williams is, uh, is taking swipes at our city and saying we need to ask him for help. Uh, we already have. So what you're going to do with a safe consumption site in your ministry is something that you need to make a decision on. We've already weighed in and told you that we think it should be distributed and it shouldn't be a centralized site. So if, if the minister would like to come and talk to us again, I'm happy to do so. But what's happening at uh, Sheldon Schumer is not working. Hi. Um, just a quick question, because it seems like from the last year, the province has been talking only about the city of Calgary. A lot of issues that they think that the city of Calgary Council is working on, that they should be, you could be doing better. What do you do as mayor to ensure that your relationship is not fractured, but also your city doesn't get painted in a negative light from the province who seems to be wanting to piggyback and attack your city, whether it be homelessness, infrastructure, water? I can tell you that Calgary is an incredible city and the people that live there and work there believe that firmly. The people who are coming to invest in our city would also tell you the same thing. So when you look at the fact that we are the economic engine of this province, if not this nation, Calgary is an incredible city. And so to take swipes at our city is something that is your prerogative. But I would say you should be celebrating the fact that you have a city that is doing so well on all fronts and is welcoming and inclusive and a great place to live. Final question. We are literally a year out from the next municipal election. What does the city of Calgary have to do moving forward? Is there anything big that you're planning? Because you've got 365 days potentially until the next uh, municipal election. What's priority number one for Mayor Gondek? 
for myself and my council, there are priorities that are not uh, sequenced. They all have to be met. We need to focus on affordability for Calgarians. We need to make sure that public safety is something that we prioritize. We need to make sure our infrastructure is in good shape. Essentially, the very basics of the services that we need to offer as a muni municipality are the things that we need to be focused on right now. And then final follow-up question on that. Have you decided if you're going to run for re-election or not? <laughs> I, I'm just that guy who will ask every mayor that <laughs> during this convention. So have you made the decision yet? I can appreciate that people want to know if I'm going to run for re-election. And I will tell you this, when I make that decision, I will certainly let you know. Right now, I'm focused on making sure that we are delivering services to Calgarians that they deserve. Any other questions, anyone? Great. Thank you so much Thank for you. your time.